Hi, my name is Eugene and I'm a general and colorectal surgeon. As part of my work, not only do I do surgery, but also spend a significant amount of time doing an endoscopy such as colonoscopy. Uh, colonoscopy is a very important uh, investigation to investigate uh, any lower intestinal tract symptoms. Um, also, it can be used for screening for polyps or cancer in the general population. Today, I want to bring you through what it's like to do a colonoscopy and uh, different issues that we may encounter while we're doing them. So here is a colonoscopy and I'm going to show you how the controls work and how we use it to navigate uh, the patient's uh, colon. So if you look at here, this is what we call the dials which help us to control the instrument and with the instrument we can turn it to go down, up, right as well as left. And uh, these movements, including an in and outward motion as well as a rotational motion, helps us to navigate uh, to get to the end of the colon. So not only can we uh, move the scope, but we can also do certain manoeuvres uh, such as a suction, where we can uh, suck the fluid, or we can even uh, blow air to increase the size of the colon to allow us to see properly. And we can also wash to flush out any dirt or impurities from the colon and remove any blockages if necessary. Because we don't have a real patient today, um, we're going to show you what we do in training, uh, which is essentially doing scopes on a model. And you can see the model here, it's like a real colon with an abdomen, and uh, we can actually configure the intestine to a way that matches the difficulty of the learner. And so um, I'll just show you how to do a scope through this model, and we'll cover it up so that I cannot cheat and see where I'm going. Well, we first start by putting the scope through the anus, uh, into the into the rectum and then we'll proceed with the scope from here. Basically using the controls, I am moving the scope around and turning the scope to move into the different turns and corners of the large intestine. As we move slowly, we may have to readjust the length of the scope so that we don't uh, cause any injury. Sometimes we can do some flushing if necessary. Um, so now we've reached the end of the colon. Now the issue is we have to look for any polyps or any abnormalities along the way. And at the same time, if we do see them, uh, we remove them. Uh, so most of the time, uh, we expect a withdrawal time of at least six minutes uh, to ensure that uh, the scope is done properly and we don't miss uh, any lesions. And of course, if we see one, for example, a polyp or a tumour, at the same time, we can remove it, we can take a biopsy, um, we can also uh, tattoo it, which means put a mark on it if the patient needs surgery so that we can identify it during the surgery and uh, find out uh, where it is so that we can remove it properly. And that's how we do our colonoscopies.